me to grow the activities of ICC, and I thank them profusely. In addition, my colleagues in ICC, namely Mr. Arar Gokhale and the staff of ICC, were a tremendous help. My thanks are to my wife, who supported me unstintedly when I was getting corroded by chemical industry during the years of my activity. When I look back to the last 50 years of Indian chemical industry, each decade had a specific story for a, a, a particular subsector of chemical industry from 67 to 69. When I was working at Hadelia Chemicals, I used to attend major seminars of chemical industry, which was driven by stalwarts like Mr. D. M. Tibedi, Dr. M. M. Sharma, Dr. B. D. Tilak, and Dr. Idulji. Since then, I used to interact with Mr. D. M. Tibedi, and his speeches were a fist to the ears. His contribution left a mark in Indian chemical industry, particularly with ICMA and now ICC. Those days, Thana Bilapur Road and Chembur were humming with new industries like Nocil, Pil, Hadilia, Union Carbide, Calico, Polychem, RCF. Today, out of them, only RCF and Hadilia under SI group remain, and time has taken toll of the balance industries. When I was thanking Mr. Rajiv Pandya for Hadilia's existence till date due to diversification he took up during his stewardship, he expressed his gratitude to our professor, guru of the chemical industry, Dr. M. M. Sharma, and uh, whose wise counsels have saved Hadilia. Besides Bombay, growth started in Gujarat orchestrated by Mr. J.J. Mehta and Mr. D.C. Gami, respectively at IPC, ICL and GSFC, and today Gujarat economy is driven by chemical industry. Spate of fertilizer plants were commissioned during 80s, and after that fertilizer industry hadn't seen much investment except the world's largest fertilizer plant consisting of 7,500 TBD sulfuric acid, 3,000 TBD P2O5, and 3 million tons complex fertilizer plant at Pradev, which was commissioned in 1999, and uh, now belongs to IFCO. I was happy being associated with the execution of that project, and I was more happy because I had seen after my graduation a sulfuric acid plant of 10 tons per day with Bengal chemicals, which was set up by the uh, Acharya Prafula Chandra Roy, the founder of Indian chemical industry in Eastern sector. 90s witnessed the emergence of Reliance as world scale petrochemical followed by refining giant. During 2000 onwards, specialty chemical sector, pharma sector, and agrochemical sector had a very good growth, based on which today's Indian chemical industry has an annual output of in excess of $200 billion, including the refinery and all sectors as compared to Chinese chemical industry, which is today has a turnover of $1.3 trillion, almost equal to the GDP of India. But Indian chemical industry's turnover has a good sector, 15% of the manufacturing sector, and can be more if it gets certain support. And as the uh, Honorable Minister said, we need government support. And I tell you, sir, when I joined Indian Chemical Council, my first activity next day that is 12th December 2005 was to travel to Delhi and attend the meeting chaired by Deputy Chairman Planning Commission to introduce the concept of PCPIR, Petrochemical Petroleum Investment Region by six NRIs, including Christopher Menges of City Bank, Punendu Chatterjee and Wadwani of Wadwani Foundation in the form of Jurong Island, Singapore, Lurik Safnam, BSF, etc. The concept is to build up downstream investment of $40 billion starting with a refinery or a cracker involving an investment of four to five billion dollars for each PCPR. During last nine years, except that the PCPR have been approved at Daesh, Paradip, Mangalore, Kadalur, Baisak, and Haldia, no visible work has started seven except Daesh, where the investment would have come on its own. When Prime Minister is giving thrust on manufacturing sector, make in India, first develop India, the realization PCPRs approved can add at least $100 billion to chemical industry turnover in five years. Therefore, sir, it, it, it has been very enlightening for me to see the Minister of Chemicals in 120 days has been spelling the chemical industry like any of us. And we are thrilled by your uh, understanding of the chemical and petrochemical industry. Sir, a steering group of experts be formed under your ministry, as I was told, it has been already to uh, <clears throat> to conceptualize, monitor, and assist realization of PCPIRs. Each PCPIR shall form the PCPIR Development Authority, consisting of stakeholders 
and work as per PCR, PCPR policy in place. Anchor clients, generally PSUs like Indian Oil, HPCL, or Opal, should declare the feed stocks available to PCBR and sign MOU with above authority. That's where we are having a big gap today. Long-awaited chemical policy and fertilizer policy need to come out at the earliest. As far as the individual industries are concerned, they should talk to each other and strategize actions to be taken for with support of government authorities to beat the competition that is particularly from China, and half time-bound growth of Indian chemical industry. There should be total interaction between the industry and institutes, impacting engineering disciplines, so that engineers are available for the manufacturing sector. Sir, it's very heartening for me to see you spell out your program, and I'm sure with your support, Indian chemical industry will achieve much bigger milestones in years to come. Thank you once again for the, uh, our bestowed on you. Thank you. Nisha, sir, we expect your enthusiasm and energy to infect all of us in a more furious way now. This is the fifth time ICC will be presenting the ICC Lifetime Achievement Award. And ICC is privileged to confer the award on Mr. Chimanlal Kimchan Mehta. I'm not rich, but I am resourceful. These are the words then empowered Mr. Chimanlal Kimchan Mehta, CK Mehta, to create an empire called Deeper Group. Mr. CK Mehta began his entrepreneurial pursuit at the tender age of 16 years. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at the age of 82, he continues to be the inspiring force. Many initiatives, whether in education or healthcare, continue to receive his support. At the same time, humility and simplicity have retained his forte. Mr. Mehta has set an example even in crisis by not even asking a single person to leave during the survival struggle. Mr. Mehta is a great role model for an entrepreneur who dares to dream big, be it in industry or in service towards the society and achieve these dreams. In recognition of his outstanding contributions, Indian Chemical Council is pleased to confer the ICC Lifetime Achievement Award for the year 2013 on Mr. C.K. Mehta, Chairman Deeper Group of Companies. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause. A proud moment for the family indeed. That's a Kodak moment for everyone. And I'm now going to request C.K. Mehta, sir, to please come on the dais and say a few words to us. You can give your mic. Okay. Uh, no prepared speech. Uh, extempore is all that we want to hear, sir. No prepared speeches for you. Our minister did not have one. No, he had one, but he didn't use it. <laughs> Honorable Minister of Chemicals, Fertilizers, and Petrochemicals, Minister Anand Brahman, Professor Kakodkar, friends, and I see all you as an entrepreneur. So I will talk as if I'm talking to an entrepreneur. Probably you might not be aware that uh, at the age of 42, First, I got the award from ICC. And at the fag end of my life, I'm again getting award from ICC. And uh, I think this has created a great confidence at that age that though I have no formal education, no financial background, I was born trader. This was my first industries at that Deepak Nitrat Limited. And that has been given Sir PC Ray Award. When I know very little about awards, apart from running the industries and other things. And I think, I think, when I have asked Yogesh why, that I am too old for this award. But he said, no, sir, you must take it. So then I remember 
that the first award I got it is from ICC. And that has brought me luck. And I had the fag end of this. I'm getting again award from ICC. So first of all, I must thank all of you. And uh, <laughs> I've been requested that I should give some receiving speech, speech. Now, I am not much accustomed to give a speech, you see, but I may give you some views or my experience of past and present. What I have been watching, that our days were different. Every week we used to run to Delhi for getting either CG clearance or industrial license clearance or this or that. And uh, today, I don't see any of my son running to Delhi. And this is the difference. And uh, at that time, uh, in my fun first project of about little over crore of rupees, they have given 3.5 lakhs CG clearance. And that also under World Bank loan. So I have to come to ICICI and uh, convince them that uh, this three and a half lakhs rupees I'm going to spend properly. Now, Mr. Natkani and Mehta and they have all cleared it. But after two days, three days, I got a message from Mr. Uh, our H.T. Parekh. He wants to see me. And I was really a little nervous that though I need only three and a half lakhs foreign exchange, but uh, why Parik Sahib is calling me? So he called me and he says, okay, I want to listen from you. Why you have choose to come into manufacturing when you are doing excellent good in trading, you see? Oh God, I was, I was expecting something. He will ask me about the nitrite and sodium nitrite, nitrate plant in this and that. So I said, sir, there is a story behind that. I will tell you. But bless me first that you are clearing my CG. <laughs> so he said, no, 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 that is already cleared. Don't worry, I have called you only to know to background, to know the background. I want to hear from you. So I said, I, said, I started with zero. I have no formal education. And he said, but how come then you come to the chemical industry? I said, I'm a born trader in chemicals. This is how Deepak Nitrate started, you see. Now, he, I've given him little more information here and there. And, but then he said that, look, I gave you advice to three. And this advice, I think, good for you people also. Even today, it is valid. See, he says that, first of all, Mr. Mehta, you are a new man. You keep a good relation build up with everybody, whether senior or junior that will help you in grow in the life. Second thing he advised me, that in industries, you are all the time in trading. So you build a good team. And building team is uh, very important, no doubt. But to give them, you know, delegation, because generally traders will always like to keep everything a, at his chest. So he says you must de delegate the power properly. And what I am finding it today, that this message is equally good for everybody. And uh, generally, entrepreneur is find it very difficult to delegate, especially who is a self-made man. But this is a message which I got H.T. Parekh has given me, and I am Every day, I'm, I'm even today following it, it you see. Then the third thing he says that uh, never say no for anything. You can do anything. I said, sir, but I'm a small man. No, 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 no. Don't think that way. I'm sorry. I don't know whether I'm talking right in this audience. But I feel I'm addressing to the entrepreneur. An entrepreneur must believe these things, you see. So, 
I have heard Parikh Sahib's all advice and I was on the way uh, thinking that uh, why he has told me all these things. So I must uh, take care properly how to behave with people, you see, and so on and so forth. But at a later stage I realized that it has helped me all throughout my life, you see. And today, whatever, I mean, say because the person who has started without any resources, if he has reached to this level that at, I have put number of chemical plants where with the help of my son, no doubt about it, but the plants are of highly technical. I mean, say if you see ammonia plant, then it's not a small thing. Ammonia plant, my application was rejected three times. And why it was rejected? So you see that when government is changing from 900 tons to 1350 tons, because 900 tons is no more economical, how your project of 272 tons will survive? I say I will put efforts and see that survive. But why don't you clear it? They have rejected. I say you are flaring the gas, because in those days Bombay gas has come out. And then I have started meeting other secretary. Now, the, today, you have not to do anything with the government. You are free. You are at liberty to put any industries. And I think our minister Saab also will agree that we don't need any permission, you see. Well, there it was every little thing we have to go to government and uh, follow it up, follow it up regularly. So, this uh, project was given to me, ultimately. And, uh, but they have put number of conditions that uh, pipeline you will lay. I said, that's not my business. Uh, because I was going to cross at least hundreds of thousands, hundreds of farmers' land to highway, one river, and then not knowing any technology. And I have to lay the pipeline to reach to my plant so that I can use gas. So these are the difficulties we have faced. But Parekh um, Sabe says that never get afraid. You must always say yes to government. Never say no to government. So when this uh, condition has come, I say fine, we will lay the pipeline also. Now, when I was laying pipeline, MSAB chairman has come, that Mr. Mehta, your pipeline is being laid, but they are stopping my pipeline, which is only five kilometers from Navasheva. So I say, what's the problem? He said, I don't know. Now, if you don't allow my pipeline to go first, we will not allow you to go for your pipeline. So I, when I checked, they find that it is a government method of uh, giving this compensation during those farmers and other things. So I say, leave it to me. We will do it. Every week, our men used to go with money and distribute the things. So within three months, I have laid pipeline, say 46 kilometer, one and a half meter below the ground. And it has gone very well. I have said, I have done nothing, mayor. Only what Parekh Sabe said, that be a good human. So I have remained good human with the farmers, with the people, local people, number of I would say these are the things which is very simple. What Narendra Bhai today says, no, that jadu lagaye. So we look like that. We jadu lagane ye koi baat hai jadu lagayenge. But this simple thing is very, it's a very, very important thing you see. And this is how I uh, uh, reached to this level you see. And uh, later on, I was because I'm lucky man. Let me tell you very frankly. I had three good sons, and uh, apart from that, I had an excellent team and who has always supported me. As I am not a chemist, nor I have any, I have received, learned only up to SSE, you see. There was no choice for me because my family was in need of money, you see. So I had to start something initially, chemical brokerage to trading to then turn to industries, you see. So now, the problem was coming of Kasturba has called me, Kasturba Lalbai. I mean, he, he, was, he used to love me. So he said that, look, many 
you are your everything is going like this but sometime it may go like this also so you be you should be careful i have never thought that uh, we will have such type of such days we will see but it has happened that in 94 when we have taken about 460 crores investment from 1 crore to 67 crores first and 67 crores to 490 crores 460 crores government policy suddenly changed and i still have that uh, written from our manmohan singh that uh, this year we are uh, decontrolling phosphatic fertilizer and next year we will decontrol nitrogenous fertilizer so i have accepted my nitrogen phosphatic fertilizer plant which was invested quite a large I have to close down for the time being and unfortunately at that time some accident has taken place in methanol plant so practically 400 350 crores investment was dead my share price has come down from 50 rupees to 8 rupees below par you see so keeping all this thing why i am telling you that in life in a business hurdle comes but never get mentally upset always god will help you put your best efforts and you will go and i'll succeed so let me tell you this. now 10 minutes has been given and i think i have already taken more time you see but i can only now say one thing that during my those days i realized that uh, this success is going in my mind and uh, i must first take a decision that when should i retire because generally generally politician and industrialist never retires <laughs> they retire when they die i decided i want to make change i must retire but at what age it is so at when i was 48 i said 50 no 60 no 65 no i am still because it's a very uh, you know uh, decision and so 70 ah 70 okay not thinking whether i will live 70 also so i have taken 70 you see and uh, then i forget i have uh, <laughs> that i have to retire at 70 but on that day when i was completing 70 my wife has uh, sent my grandchildren ke bolo dada ko bolo humko kuch lena hai to naya store hua tha to kya hai they have taken me and they she invited all executives about 60 70 and uh, has thrown me out that you go out and look after your grandchildren and when i come back i find that oh god my whole house is full there is no space for city and uh, uh, she has announced that from tomorrow i am not going to come office <laughs> and it was really bombshell for me but anyhow i have followed that things so that has given me an opportunity to look after the social work what now my request is that chemical industries people can help lot to the social activities and uh, he, this area government uh, generally government is looking after poor people you see but government can't reach everywhere and i think this is our duty to do something in this area provided you also take a decision that you will retire at particular age now many people think that but what i will do thereafter so here is the offer i am giving you the foundation is doing very good work we have about 200 300 people working in foundation so wherever your plant is there and if you feel that we can survey that area and give you some guidance that this is what you have to you can do we can start on your behalf of also i mean we will not charge you anything we will bear that cost but ultimately we will 
we will see that you take over the charge because giving donation is not much big it does not make much value working in such social work which will give you opportunity to meet those poor people and i think this is the maximum i can in return give to icc you are giving me today award you already given me award in 74 after 40 years i am getting another award so i think i should uh, at least offer you something eh? thank you very much ladies and gentlemen they do not make any like you anymore sir we are delighted to hear your simple but rich experiences our generation needs to learn how to keep things simple true and clear be good truthful and well meaning and perhaps then at the age of 82 our face will still have a halo like mr mehta's has i'm going to now request mr rakesh bhartia who is the incoming president of icc and mr yogesh kothari to please come forward we will have the baton handing over from the past president mr yogesh m kothari to mr rakesh bhartia who is the incoming president of icc Mr Yogesh Kothari a pioneer has been a very successful track record and under his leadership ICC has taken several new initiatives ladies and gentlemen a huge round of applause for Yogesh bhai <laughs> Mr Rakesh Bhartia the new president of ICC we all wish you a very productive stint in the very positive environment and now i would request Mr Bhartia to address the gathering i'll keep it brief because i think we are anyway running late and the minister has left so he spoke about spirits i just hope that he doesn't burn all the spirits into fuel keep some of it available for chemistry too and you know when i was hearing mr mehta speaking I, I get I got some inspiration because I don't know what has prompted the council members to assign me this role of uh, the presidentship because I'm I don't have a chemistry background so Yogesh bhai he's a chemical engineer and he understands chemistry and I kept wondering all these years that what could have prompted him but I, I must express my gratitude to all the council members all the seniors for having given me this opportunity. because as all of us know i think india is possibly at an inflection point i think in terms of an opportunity it can't get more exciting for all of us sitting here in ways more than one so to that extent i thank everybody for giving me this opportunity and i do hope that i'll continue to receive the support of all my seniors my peers and as i said i'll keep it brief and today we are in the day and age of acronyms or alliterations so i'll use a few of them and then hand over uh, the mic to ravi because we had a brief uh, interlude in terms of what i should be speaking and what i should be not so we speak of icc i think on on the dais we have icc available so we have invention in professor kakotkar we had uh, honorable minister anand kumar consistency he's been winning elections assuming he'll continue to win elections and yogesh bhai i think he's he stands for collaboration cohesion cooperation i think you can put all these together <laughs> and and that is what yogesh bhai is all about so i think one of the reasons why i i am here is because of him if it wouldn't have been for his persistence i don't think i would have assumed this responsibility so on the dais itself we have icc now not being a chemical student what do i understand of chemistry so if i consider myself purely from a layman perspective i think as professor kakotkar pointed out that chemistry is there in every aspect of our life but whenever you speak to somebody they treat chemistry with disrespect i think they think chemistry in any manner or form is bad so when i look at chemistry icc i see chaos now that's the typical reaction of any individual and it is the onus on the industry and every member of the industry to change the definition of icc and what would be my definition my icc i see care so today when i look at when i look at indian chemical council i think the foremost
thing on our agenda is responsible care. And for, my Yogesh Bhai did point out in his speech, the number of companies which have become a signatory, the number of companies which have started using the logo. Everybody's talking about corporate social responsibility. But what responsible care um, encompasses is caring for the society. And that's what chemical industry is all about. I think possibly chemical industry is far ahead of many other industries in India in caring for the society. So that's one definition for me. Then I look at ICC, IC cure. But today, because of chemistry, we are able to cure a lot many aspects, be it physical ailment diseases, which otherwise may not be possible. When ICC, IC creation. Without creation, none of us would be standing here in the manner and form in which we are. ICC, IC construction. All of us are looking for growth. All of us, are, all of us have aspirations. It needs construction. So when I see ICC, I see chemistry, and I hope each one of us. Con